Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the coffee cup pot holder and this is the middle one that we see here. It's actually really quite an easy design and today I'm going to improvise a little bit on this pattern and I'll explain more in just a moment. So here we have a cup of coffee and it's actually pretty neat and it calls for one layer of lily sugar and cream in order to have it and you can see we've changed the color just like so. So because of the way that I operate in the kitchen, I'm kind of dangerous if you ask anybody, is that I like to make sure that things are extra secure for me and the amount of yarn that's been suggested in this pattern, you have enough to be able to do this as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two layers of the cup of coffee itself and then I'm gonna sandwich them together and then when I do the border, I'm gonna put them together as if it's one and therefore I'll have double the thickness and therefore when I'm grabbing at anything that's hot, I have double the thickness between me and the hot surface. Also you can use these as a, a pot holder as well or a pot, uh, hot pad just like so. You can put things down and protect your surfaces. So let's take a closer look at this pattern and you're gonna need a four millimeter size G crochet hook today and of course you'll need your Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. Lily Sugar and Cream is 100% cotton so this will be able to have uh, great results in the kitchen. You'll also be able to have it with hot surfaces and it can get wet because it's 100% cotton as well. So let's get on with today's pattern. So I have to apologize right up the vent. My background is white and so is this coffee cup so it may be harder for you to see and I will keep my hands in, in front, uh, behind it so that you can see it as much as possible. You'll notice that it's a really quite of a large rectangular shape. It's got a little bit of a uh, of an uh, uh, a formation at the top and you'll notice that it comes out from the bottom and it goes outward just like so for the bottom of the cup. So it's actually quite an easy pattern to be able to do once you get started and then you stop growing it. It's just a straight shot up and then there's three rows here of different color if you prefer that. So what we're going to be doing in today's pattern is that you'll notice that the cup of coffee is sitting in here. So it looks like it's going to be out of shape but once you add in the extra where the coffee is sitting using your warm brown then it'll work out really quite nicely. So this is kind of the background. So because I'm doing two layers you can do the front and the back the same way if you wish but in my case I'm only going to do the front to actually have the cup of coffee uh, actually showing right here in the front. And we're going to start with a cup of coffee and do the coffee first. So using your warm brown we're going to do our coffee first and we're going to create a slip knot to begin and we are going to insert our four millimeter size G crochet hook today. So I would need you to chain 16 and this is going to be a foundation chain so it's going to go across the work. We're going to go up over and then back around the underside of it. So we'll do that all together of course here on camera. So let's chain 16 together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So there you go. So there is your cup of coffee. So you're going to notice that if you have this done in advance, it looks like it's bigger, but once you start working with it, it does shrink down. So don't worry about that at this moment. So let's uh, go across the first round. So we're going to go up over and then around the other side. So let's begin and I'm going to be reading. I know how to crochet and read at the same time so I do look away quite often. Uh, so I'm gonna just go through round number one quite slowly with you. There is only one round altogether. So we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So just count back one and two and turn it over and get the back loop only and we're going to slip stitch that as we go. Okay, so slip stitch second chain from the hook and then it says to slip stitch the next chain. So just going into the next one just slip stitch again. Okay, so be nice and loose with it. And then it says one single crochet in each of the next two crochets or two chains. So let's just go one and two and then what does it say? It says half, one half double crochet in each of the next two chains. So let's wrap the hook first going into the next chain and we're gonna half double crochet. So it looks like we're getting bigger. So we're gonna do two of those in a row. And then it says to do one double crochet in each of the next three chain. Now I've already done the background on this already the, the one side. The top of the cup is the exact same as what you're seeing right now. So this is actually matching it now that I've done, now that I've done that first and this is secondary. So there's three double crochets in a row. So that's gonna be the top peak of your cup of coffee. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start getting smaller. So one half double crochet in the next two chains. So we got one and two. Okay. And then it says one single crochet in each of the next two chains. 
So one and two and then it says single crochet in the next, sorry slip stitch in the next two. So slip stitch so one and two and that's it. You've gone all the way across but we're not quite done. So let's do the other side. We're just gonna flip it upside down and just start working our way back across now on the other side. So we just flipped it upside down. So what we're gonna do is then the first two we're going to slip stitch. So one and two. So we've already done that before but now it's gonna be on the side of the, of there. So slip in the first two. Okay. And now we have to single crochet in the next two. So one and two. And then half double crochet in the next two. One and two. And here's a tip for you. So this side of the stitches should be the same. So see these three double crochets that are next? So the three double crochets that I'm about to go are gonna be right into that same one. So just three double crochets in a row. One, two, and three. Just like that. And now what I want you to do is two half double crochets in a row. So one and two. And then two single crochets in a row. So one and two. And what is the final two stitches? If you said slip stitch you write. So slip stitch one and slip stitch two. And that's it. That's your cup of coffee. That's what it looks like going down. So, so now that I slipped in all you just want to do now is just cut your strand and you have a lot left over there and you're gonna use that particular strand to sew it into position. Okay so you're just gonna pull it out and then we're gonna throw a darning needle on when we're ready. But just put this aside and I already have my back sample so what's gonna happen is it's gonna look like it's here and you're gonna sew it in a way that it's gonna look like it's three dimensional once it's sitting there. Isn't that kinda cool? So put that aside and I'll show you how to do the cup of coffee next. So let's do the actual mug here. We're gonna start on the bottom of the mug. We're gonna work our way to the top. There's gonna be some growth right here in the base and then we're just gonna do nine rows of the white, three rows of this and then five rows of that and then one at the top. So the top here is just exactly what you just did with the cup of coffee over here. Isn't that kinda cool? So let's begin to do that next. So again my background is white and I do apologize for that using white yarn here today. And I'm doing a slip knot right now and I'm putting it onto the hook. Remember it never counts as one. I'll keep my hands as much as I can behind the work. So you're gonna chain 12. Remember that doesn't count as one. So we're gonna just chain 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So let's begin row number one. So second chain of the hook, so one and two, just turn it over, get the back loop only and just go into the back loop and single crochet. And I want you to single crochet yourself in the back loop of each of the, one of the chains, the one in every chain all the way across and I'll see at the end of this chain. So I'm coming up all the way across. I'm going into my final chain, just one single crochet into each. And we'll leave this straggler down and we'll get rid of that later at another time. So let's move on to round number two. So what we need to do is that we need to grow it out. So the, we're gonna chain up one and the first stitch is going to be just one single crochet and the growth is gonna be in the second stitch which there's gonna be two single crochets in that one. So one and two. So what I want you to do, you can either count your stitches or you can just look and get the second last one and that'll be two single crochets in and the last one is just one. So you can either count across which I don't recommend. So just go across and you're gonna eventually just run out of stitches and you wanna look for the second one before the end. If you can always look for little tips like that instead of counting so you can keep an eye on the TV instead of having to waste your time counting, it's pretty cool. So there's two stitches left, one and two. So the second last one there's gonna be two single crochets in and then the next final one is gonna be one and that was row number two. Let's turn to work and do number three. So let's turn our work and do row number three together. So what I want to do is that I want to chain up one and it's just one single crochet in each stitch going all the way across for row number three. 
Row number three is the consistent one throughout most of this pattern and we'll refer to it again later. So just one single crochet into each going across and I'm almost all the way across already so I'll keep going. So row number four is gonna be the final growth at the bottom of the cup at the base of the cup and you're just doing one single crochet in each go right to the end and then turn and let's do row number four. So turn our work row number four. So row number four is just like number two. We're gonna grow it again. So chain up one, one single crochet into the first one and then the next one has two single crochets in it. So it's the second one that has the growth. Are you gonna count all the way across? No, not really. Just go to the second last one, put in two and then one into the final. So let's make our way over there. So one single crochet as we go and just look for the telltale sign of the ending stitches that are in the row. Okay, so I got one more left. So I got two stitches left. So this last, second last one is gonna have two single crochets in and then the next one is just one. So what I want to do is I'm gonna leave the rest for you. So now the next nine rows, so just write on a piece of paper rows one through nine and just one uh, chain up one and one single crochet in each and then go back and forth to do that nine times and that will take you up until underneath the red line here. So you can see that it's just the same base here and you're just gonna make up nine rows here. So just to start again, so this is row number one of nine, so just chain up one and then just do one single crochet in each stitch going all the way across. This will be row number one of nine and then just continue and get all the way to nine. I'll see you back there in just a moment. So now I have my nine rows done and I'm just gonna trim my yarn and I was just a few minutes ago that I left you so it doesn't take long to get here. So I'm just gonna weave in my ends and I'm going to pick up the red and I'm gonna start right where I left off. Okay, so there's gonna be three rows of just what you're just normally doing uh, and you are just going to attach. So just create a slip knot to begin. Insert your hook and then go into the very first one and attach with a slip stitch. So through and through chain up one and then one single crochet into the same one and now you're just gonna go back and forth three times using the red and just one stitch into each just like you had been already. So just uh, do three rows of the red and then we're gonna meet back up and I'll switch it back to white and then we'll do the last five rows together in white and then we'll do the final topping as well. So I'll get that done and I'll see you back here. So get three rows of red done now. Okay, so I have three rows of red done. Just finished a few seconds ago. I just left you a few seconds ago too. And I just blazed across and now I'm gonna weave this in and I'm gonna switch back to white and I'm gonna do five more rows of white doing exactly what we normally were doing. And then we're gonna do our final row, something different. And it's just like the, the coffee itself. So let's turn to work and grab our white back. Let's just create a slip knot to begin. Insert the hook, go into the same one that you finished off with, join it with a slip stitch, chain up one and then one single crochet into each and make sure you bury in your colors as you go. It just makes a lot of sense and just one single crochet. So the next five rows are just white and do that and I'll see you at the end and we'll uh, do the topping together. So let's do the very top line together. So I just got my five done and it's the same way that we did the little coffee with. Okay, so it's just the same shape that you see on the one side. So forget the bottom, just do the top. So let's uh, begin to do that and now that I've done that plus I did the other sample I can re easily remember. So don't do the first one, just uh, don't chain up one. Just go to the second one over and I want you to slip stitch. So just slip stitch over and then we're going to start our pattern. So the next two are going to be single crochets. So one, and two and then the next two are going to be half double crochets. So one and two and then the next three are going to be double crochets. So one, two and three and the next two are gonna be half double crochets. So one and two and then the next two are gonna be single crochets and then the final two stitches that we have left, they're each going to be one slip stitch. 
So here's what I'm gonna recommend at this. This is where I'm gonna improvise from the pattern. So if you want to do, so that's just a slip stitch. So there you go. So if you wanna do double layers in order to have a double thickness pad, this is where you're gonna leave it. So if this is the first one and you wanna do two, fasten off here, weave in your ends and leave it. Okay, so what we wanna do is the final border that goes all the way around. We wanna take our second unit here and we wanna put it together and then just put it together so that you have double the thickness so that it protects your hands even more. But what I'm gonna do at this point is that I'm going to put on my, my, um, my coffee before I go any further. So I'm just gonna stop here, just pull up a loop. We're gonna use that continuing so don't get rid of that. And what I want you to do is that I want you to put on this. Now if you are doing the only one layer and not two, then make sure that when you go in you don't go all the way through the project so you don't see any of the brown coming out the other side. But if you're like me and gonna do double layers, then what you can just do is that you can go all the way through because the other layer will block it from being seen from behind. Just like that. So let's review on how to sew on your, your coffee. So put your strand from the coffee into a darning needle like so and I want you to lay down the coffee that is in there and I want you to match the shape. So the top of the shape and of this and the coffee should be the same. Should be pretty close to it. You wanna keep the coffee on the inside of this just like you see and you will be doing a border on both sides so you can get pretty close. So what I want you to do is that I want you to take the yarn and I want you to dive straight in. Okay, so if you're going to do only one layer then just go in behind and just grab a few fibers, okay, and then just go through. So if you see the darning needle coming through the back, you know that you're too deep. So just coming through and just pull through. Okay, so it's now attached and now I'm going to come back up through the project through the outside. So I wanna keep out the, I wanna keep any of the outside stitching untouched and I just wanna concentrate kind of in the middle sections as I'm going in and out of the stitches. So now I've got it now positioned and all I'm just gonna do is just, just dive in. Now in my case because it is double layered, I'm going to just go right through the project. So if you wanna do that, it's just easier. You can do that if you wish. Okay, now if you're one of those people where it doesn't, it's not a deal breaker for you to go all the way through and you're not worried about people turning it over and you only wanna do one layer, again, you're the artist, you decide what works for you. So you're just gonna sew on your coffee into position and then just go in and out of the stitches and then just tie it off at the end and I'll see at the end on how to do that. So just going in and out of the stitches and get your coffee into position. So my coffee is now in position and I can turn it around and you can see I went across the back of it. So that's what it would look like if you don't want to just bury it into some fibers if you're not doing it double layered like I am. So I'm just gonna go back and forth into the actual fibers in behind the, the coffee and I wanna just tie a quick little knot And what I'm gonna do is that in order to get these to really stay is that if you glide in and out of the work three times after you tie that knot, so one, and just going in a different set of fibers for two. And of course if you're doing a one layered and you really wanna hide it then you'll take your time and then just do it on the front side but underneath the coffee itself. There you go, so then you got it third time. So now I can officially cut that right down out of the way and now my coffee is in a position just like you see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my second layer of my coffee and I'm going to sandwich it together and put that together so that it double layers and this comes in handy especially if you're grabbing because then you'll be like when you go to grab you'll have two. So let's uh, start going around the outside for your layer of finishing this off. So let's begin attaching my coffee together and now if you're doing one layer you don't need to worry about sandwiching two together just like you see here. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go in and I want to uh, join these together. So I'm just gonna go right through the two and pull through. And now we're officially just joined together. So the instructions tell us that um, right now it says to single crochet ourselves um, so that we have eight going down. So let's chain up one first because we're just starting a new section and we're going to continue now. 
Now I'm gonna go through the front side of the first one and through the joining side. Use this red line as your, your guide if you're gonna do it the same way I am and you want to join them together. So this is one of eight and just keep moving down. So each one of these rows because it's single crochet equals a stitch. So that was two and this is three this is four and okay and now we're going into the red. This is five this is six and the seven and eight. So we're officially now done the one section and we are now going to move on to the handle in the instructions. So let's move on into that section. So right now we're gonna move in the instructions to what is called the handle. So right where we are we did not fasten off we're just gonna chain up ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. And coming down to the second row just get it close enough. Second row I want you to slip stitch. So just come out to the outside and just slip stitch it together. So just pull through and through. Okay so here is your little handle. So then what we want to do then is that we're gonna work our way down the other side. Okay so what we're going to do is just uh, um, we're gonna do a slip stitch in each one of the chains. So just coming into the same chain and just slip back through it. So just slip and what we want to do is get to where we were in the beginning. So the next chain we're gonna slip. So we're slipping them all just to build the thickness. If you want a single crochet if it's easier for you. There's no uh, crochet police. Not out today at least. So you can do that if you wish. That's up to you. I'd be inclined to but that's just I gotta stick to the pattern to some degree. So we're just making this handle just slip stitching back and I'm getting myself all the way back to where I had been before. So now I'm all the way back to where I've been before and so I just moved down to the next uh, set of rows and I'm now going to single crochet them together again. So I'm gonna go right through the two panels. If you're not uh, double layering don't worry about it just go through the one side. So on the corners when you hit them Okay, there's gonna be two single crochets in each corner. So there will be one here and one here on the other side and then you're just gonna come back up. It will have two double crochets here in the corner and then you just work your way back to where you were. So this is kind of an easy way. So let me just get you to the first corner and just quickly reflect on that. So as I was down in the corner I put in two single crochets and that gives me my rounded edge at the bottom and again continuing to match these across as I go and again if you're not double layering then you don't need to match but it's just a matter of just jumping on all the way through and just putting them together like you see. So you end up with a really nice rounded cup area at the bottom and then you'll see your handle then appearing near the top. So continue all the way around. So I'm finishing up today's tutorial and I'm just going all the way around with my final border. It's actually uh, been a really, this one's actually probably the quickest one there is considering that you have a little bit of extra work to do with uh, making that little coffee uh, splash at the top. Actually it's really quite a, a cute thing. Um, for myself I, I appreciated that I did double layers and it asked you to have a ball of white anyway and it's the only pattern of, of the trio that requires the white. So you might as well use up the yarn you have it and protect yourself at the same time. So I'm gonna come around to the where I had started and I'm just going to join then with the beginning single crochet. So you'll notice that in the photograph that I had um, it was hanging. So that's something that you can decide for yourself. My particular kitchen we don't hang anything from the walls because none of our counters hit the walls. Um, but that's something that's completely uh, your choice if you want to do that. And uh, if you want to do that then what you have to just do, I'll explain it to you, is this right at the corner here you're going to use your red and you're going to just slip stitch and just chain 15 and then come back and um, slip stitch yourself all the way back across and then just reattach. And so it'll hang from this particular position. So it's not something that is crazy. Um, myself you know these kind of things end up in a drawer for me. So me putting on a handle wouldn't even make any sense because it's not something we would use. So you know you have to determine what matches your lifestyle. Once you have all of this done you just throw it in a darning needle 
and get rid of your loose ends. Remember to go back and forth three times. It's that magic number to truly hide in your loose ends as you go back and forth just like that. So this is how to create the coffee cup. Uh, we've done all of the all of the projects then in this particular pattern and uh, you can see that it's actually kind of neat. It's really quite whimsical if you ask me and uh, so now you have your coffee uh, cup there and you got the illusion that there's coffee and much more. You can just shape it if you want to and that's all you have. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Your Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.